if you're just joining us, this is Market Insight on Soup News. So I told you earlier that this topic concerns everyone, of course, even the layman on the streets. And that's because even when you do not have a direct contact with what we want to talk about, I want to believe that you obviously do have with the finished product. And so we will be looking at NNPC, domestic crude supply and FX issue. What's the problem? What are the problems? What are we trying to solve? What are the possible solutions? Will the cancellation of domestic crude oil allocation be the best way to ease and forest supply crunch? Well, these are more uh, what we'll be looking at today. And of course, we'll have a guest. And um, Lovina, we'll be bringing in our guest. Our guest on today's show is Martins Onovo. Martins Onovo is a petroleum engineer, a former presidential candidate, and he's also a public affairs analyst, and he's also a member of the Institute of Transportation Nigerian Society of Engineers. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so we want to look at domestic crude oil allocation. Let's start with the history, you know, the history of events or policies that led to Nigeria relying so heavily on, uh, on domestic crude oil allocation? Well, you must have a domestic crude allocation if you, if you have your refining going on. Because otherwise, you, do you want to import what you produce? Um, domestic crude allocation was supposed to supply feed products to our refineries. That is the original valid justification. Now, when we had the situation where we deliberately round down our refineries and we had to be importing products, um, the refineries uh, could no longer use the domestic crude allocation because they were not functioning. So because of the cost, of, uh, cost importation, uh, government came up with the idea of uh, many different ideas over the years, but the popular one is the swap. All of them are butter based that is trade by butter kind of arrangements. Okay. That, okay, since we need to import these products and we're not so liquid, why don't we give you crude of maybe a billion dollar value and you give us the following products of a billion dollar value? So that, that's what it was. It was a trade by butter arrangement. So, and. Um, I hear now that the new regime has said no. We go back to, we sell to you, you sell to us, but either, either way it's all the same because it's, it's value for value. Okay, so um, thank you. Counseling DCA, do you think is the best way? Is it a way forward? Well, it's neither here nor there because you need products. So if you cancel DCA and you don't do a better arrangement, and you sell the DCA, that quantity that you have assigned for domestic use. If you sell it, yes, you'll get dollar. But what use is the dollar when you still have to import the products? So, so it's, it's neither here nor there. If you do a decent butter arrangement, either they are direct sale, direct supply, or, uh, or they are swap, anyone you do decently is, is as good as the other. Because at the end of the day, you say if we sell it, we have uh, dollars. If you sell it, you have dollars. The dollars will not be with you because otherwise you shut down the economy. You have to import products, whether you like it or not. If you don't import products, you can't come to work. I can't come to your studio. Hmm. So <laughs> how do we get here? We get here with, with, with transportation. So, so saying that we'll sell it and we'll keep the money is, is, is being uh, naive. Okay. You sell it, you have to import products. Okay. You use it in a better arrangement, you use it to get products. So, okay. so the, the more important thing is the integrity of whatever arrangement you have in place. Okay. Whether you call it swap, or whether you call it direct sale, direct purchase, whether you call it uh, sell and uh, import, it, the important thing is the integrity of the arrangement. Okay. Okay, so ni previously Nigeria has been producing about 2.3 million barrels per day, and it is projected to increase to 2.9 million barrels per day. So um, I know we've been struggling with that, and, but I want to ask you, sir, have we been meeting the OPEC production for our barrels per day? The no, 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 not in the last uh, maybe 10 years. No, no, we, we've not. We've not. You see, we, we, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but we seem to, in this country, have the mentality that we can reap what we did not sow. We seem to have that kind of mentality. 
I can get something for nothing. I have a cake, I eat it, but it's still there. How is it going to still be there? So I, I, I've seen that a lot in our discussions. It doesn't work like that. If you want to produce crude oil, you have to find it. That's the exploration. You have to develop the facilities for production. Then you have to produce. That's work. I'm a petroleum engineer. That's what I do for a living. That's work. You want to eat corn, but you don't want to farm. You don't plant corn. How do you get the corn to eat? So we have this mentality in this country that somehow, somehow, we're going to get things that we didn't work for. We're going to get things we didn't earn. And, and it is very pervasive. So crude oil will not just flow into a tank for you to sell and collect money. No. You have to search for where it is. You have to find it. You have to drill the wells. You have to complete them. This is a lot of professional work. You have to put the production facilities in place. You have to put the storage tanks. You have to put the export facilities. You have to put meters in place. So it, it's not about uh, wishful thinking. Work has to be done. OK. So, so rather than exporting crude oil, because I'm aware that um, you know, the crude oil will be exported and returned back as petrol, Thank you. and some other parts um, receiving monetary you know, inflow in Naira, not even in dollars. So, why not do all of them, do the processing and export other contents, other things you could get from it, rather than exporting crude and taking back petrol, just petrol. You know, a lot of things can come out of, of crude oil. So what did you have to say to this? Well, uh, that's simple and that's, that's, that's valid. That's valid because the people you're importing from, don't forget, some of them bought the crude from you and you're buying products from them. And don't forget that you have four refineries. Don't forget. And that's why I started my discussion that we deliberately ran down our own refineries. The refinery in the Niger Republic is working. The one in Ghana is working. So I know what I'm, I'm talking as a professional. We deliberately ran down our own refineries because of who we are, Nigerian factor. Now we we'll go to import. If you were selling products, you will have more revenue. Products are much more expensive than crude oil. And in this country, we have sold products before. So why do we seem to be retrogressing from a point where we could sell products, from a point where we didn't know what uh, to do with uh, revenue, to a point where we are beggarly and borrowing and begging all over the world? So it, it's not about you do the right things, you get the right results. You do the wrong things, you're going to get the wrong results. So yes, we should actually be refining our crude and getting and selling products after we take the ones for domestic consumption. And that's what the people you're buying from, that's what they're doing. Look at South Africa. South Africa has no crude oil production. But South Africa has refineries. So you can see who's thinking better. But everywhere we go around the world claiming that we're Nigeria, we're smart, we're this, we're that. But we keep behaving like we're not smart. South Africa has no crude oil, but it has refineries. We have crude oil, we have crude oil and we have refineries, and then we're importing products. Look at that. We should be ashamed of ourselves, but we seem to become, have become shameless. But, sir, um, Dangote Refinery just recently started productions, and they're going to be producing aviation fuel, diesel, and also petrol PMS, for yes. regular cars. Full, full cars range, to move. regular full range So will cancelling the DCA affect the profit margin for well, well, Dangote well, Refinery? Well, the years of iniquitous uh, mismanagement we have had is now affecting Dangote Refinery. You don't even have crude to supply Dangote Refinery. Dangote is importing crude. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you can see how, how we have messed up the level of imbecility in our behavior, and then we still go around trying to assert that we're smart. Dangote is importing crude for the refiner. So from importing products, you're not importing crude. What is wrong with us? <laughs> what, what is wrong with us? How can we continue behaving like this? And we claim that uh, I went to Unilag, I went to UI, I went to University of Houston. I, what did you learn there? How to be a thief? <laughs> I don't understand. And, and we seem to be proud of, I'm a thief. I'm very proud to be a thief. I, I, I don't understand. OK, all right, let me ask you this. There's this argument that counseling DCA, you know, will ease forest crunch. I mean, 
Do you agree with this? No, it's deceptive now. If you get the forex, yes. you export the DCE and you get the forex, you can't keep it now because you have to buy product. It's simple now. So, so there's either they cancel it or no, not. There's, you, it's, it's, there's it's, no, no, it's not trying to get something from nothing. Okay. Listen, how do you get forex? It's very simple. That's how every country gets forex. You export, you get forex. What do you export? What you produce? You refuse to produce anything. You have nothing to export. Then you are importing everything. My shoes are imported, though. Yes. So, so we'll, be, we'll be coming for you. No, you, you don't have to come for me. You we'll produce, produce you. good shoes and I will buy them. Oh, OK. Produce okay. good shoes. Can you I don't even have to, power to produce the shoes. Can I add, please, that we have um, people who make shoes with them. You know. Oh, yes. yes in our what bar. kind of shoes? So that yes, when I'm yes. coming to your studio, my, the, the sole is going to pull off. <laughs> no, not the no, same. No, no, no. Let, let's come to it. Policy shoes. No, let's come to it. Abba. I would prefer to buy a Nigerian shoe anytime. OK. Anytime. This is my red cap. It is, it is important, though. Really? Show me the one you have made. Oh. Okay. okay. The rule that your children are using in primary school are important. What's wrong with us? Yes, that, okay. that's true. I know about Pines that. Pencil. What's wrong with us? Lazy people, wrong productive. What's wrong with us? And we are proud. And we argue. So, so, so let, me, let, me, let me ask. Let me come in here. If we are talking about, you know, getting stuffs, you know, imported we we'll have to everything you just mentioned including ruler as little as ruler i remember on the program um someone mentioned as small as toothpick that we we'll have to you know import is it that we don't have this confidence in nigerian you know to be able to do stuff because i want to disagree with you that there are no really qualities i mean i beg to disagree you know well, because we see people do stuffs and they come out well Yes, one person did one stuff. It comes out well. Yes. How, how many can one person do for 200 million people? Where is the power he's using to do it? You have had another system failure. For three days, there's no light in my so house. So how do we make things hold work? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. I'm talking to you right now. Okay. For three days, there's no power in my house. I'm powered by generators. Public power supply is not in my house for three days. And the explanation is that there is a system failure. So which factory is going to produce with this? So you can, that's why I say we argue. This is the kind of argument we put forward. Okay. Somebody's making something. How many shoes is it making? There are 200 million people here. We need 200 million shoes. What can one today do? He's making two shoes a day. Okay, let, so let, let, let's know ask. that, let's know that it's about productivity. Okay. Why did China move up? Uh -huh. China turned the whole country to, to an industry. I started making all sorts of things, even if they were low quality, but are producing something. You can't even produce here. Go downstairs, find the, the nearest Baba. He's using generator to bab, bab people's hair. Find the nearest welder. He's using generator. Or if he doesn't have generator, he's waiting for power to come. So how is he going to weld? It's about productivity. It's about productivity. You store your, some of your medication in your hospitals and they're supposed to be stored at be, below 4 degrees centigrade and there's no power. So how do you cool, cool, cool the refrigerators? So you can't just be doing the wrong things and expecting the right answers. The, the world is not here for your arguments. You just have to be productive. We want to eat rice. We go and farm rice. But in this country, we import rice, you know that. We import tomato paste. So, so, so it's not just about shoes. I just use shoes because it's, it's here and now. All of us have shoes. Because somebody can say, I don't eat rice, I don't eat tomato. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you mentioned something very important there. You said power is very critical oh, for yes. all our production. Oh, whether sure. Whether it's our local goods or even something as important as crude oil. Now, currently, we, I, I don't know, um, yesterday I would say that there was a, um, the national grid collapsed. That was why power was, because in my house we didn't have lights also. But right now, I understand our current administration is working on increasing the power output for us. So I believe that um, based on everything you have said, sir, is it possible that going forward in the future, our refineries, for example, the ones in the Niger Delta parts of Nigeria would also have very good production since our power energy outputs will also be increasing. 
because I believe um, this current administration wants the wants Nigeria to actually be able to produce crude oil. We've started that with Dangote refinery. So going forward, I believe the other refineries in other parts of the country, like in the Niger Delta region, would also start working and definitely we can start making our own crude oil instead of importing it. Yes, when you look at these systems, it's, it's better you put them on paper and represent all the parts so that you're not looking at only one part. Okay. Let us assume that your maintenance of uh, and rehabilitation of Potakot is successful. Let us assume Dangote refinery is successful. Let us assume that Kaduna refinery is rehabilitated excellently. Assume. Don't say I said it has been. Assume. Let us assume that Wari 2 has been rehabilitated excellently and they have full capacity. The public refineries, you have 445,000 barrels. So the Dangote, you have 650. You don't even have crude to supply to them. Dangote is importing crude right now. Yes. So, you are back to the same importation. If you had crude, then you can domestic crude, domestic refining, then you can export. That's how you get revenue. Okay. But now you don't even have crude. You're importing the crude. So you, and to import the crude, when you say import, you think that you just go and import. You pay now. Yes. <laughs> That, and that's the forex demand. That's the forex demand. Because you have to pay. And you're not going to pay Naira to them. You're going to pay forex. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue. And that's why you don't have forex. And that's why your, 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 the value of your currency is sliding. You want to be optimistic. I don't want to be optimistic with you. I'm a scientist. Yes, sir. I'm a scientist. In, in, in science, you know, we do predictions. Yes, yes. And we call it trend analysis. So if a trend is going up, we predict that it's going up. If it's going down, we predict it's going down. But we become sentimental. It's my country, so I lie for my country. You, you think you're happy your country if you lie for your country. You're saying it's going to work, it's going to work. How many years have they been telling you it's going to work? These same they, people? They've been telling us that for a long time. That, that's my point. So, so let's address the issues. OK, so if we've been having this for a long time, it's going to work, it's going to work. What mechanism do you think should be put in place. Either Thank you by very investors, much. government, Thank who you are very those much. that are supposed to carry out, you know, the mechanisms ensuring that it works. Thank you very much. It's 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 government. And we are right to blame the government. And the government has failed woefully. The refineries belong to the government. The government appointed the the management of the refinery. And it is the management and the government that ran down the refinery. So why will you blame anybody else? It's the responsibility of government. Then it's also our responsibility that we are not able to hold our government accountable. Because we are the sovereign according to the Constitution. But we're not able to hold our own government accountable. So we seem to like it when our government destroys our refineries, when our government uh, officials steal the money for our roads, when our government officials steal the money for our hospital, we seem to celebrate it and be happy about it. We seem not to be bothered. We, we, we seem to be happy. What you tolerate, you approve. What you tolerate, you approve. You approve. Okay. So, so we, we seem to be happy about it. And, and this is why we're where we are. I haven't spoken about um, the refineries, government at fault, and all of that. Is it possible for private individuals to take up this project? Are there policies? stopping them not to, you know? Yes, yes, there are policies. Uh, there are constraints. First, which private individual has capacity? Now, where do policies come in? Because you can say, yes, but if they are well established, they can get loans, agreed. But look at the number of policy somersaults. What is the framework you will use for economic analysis when you know that today there is subsidy, tomorrow subsidy is removed? Next tomorrow you are swapping. Next tomorrow you want to direct sales. Direct. Who, 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 how do you plan with this kind of unstable situation? So you, you can't prevent productivity and then claim that there is no productivity. A lot of the people in power, how many times now we have had people who became president without Wayek against the law? Against the law. So it's not my opinion. Let us assume we don't care about education. But this is against the law. Bring wire certificate that are telling stories. 
is that the kind of person you want to have the mental acumen to complete in the, in the, in the global uh, uh, environment? All over the world, people are putting their best forward. You just won a football match with Osime. You want to put me there, you think we're going to win? If you put me, we're going to lose. If you put Osime, we're going to win. So you put your best foot forward. You bring people who don't have Wayek to compete with the most brilliant people in the world on the global stage, and you want to win, you're going to lose. It, it's that simple. So can private sector do it? Yes. But why, why are they not doing it? Constraints. Because don't forget, it's the same government that will license you. If I apply now, it's the same government that will license me. And if the government official says, if you don't give me 10% of the refinery, I won't license. I come here and tell Sok News that you see, they are frustrating me. And you, you put it in the news. After that, what? OK. So go back to government. And it is government that has the resources and the capacity. And that is why we vested government with our authority as a people and vested it with our resources. That is why in America, if you see an oil field in your father's farmland, it's your own. You only pay taxes to government. In Nigeria, if you see an oil field, if you touch it, you go to prison. <laughs> so it's a different environment. Because our law is very clear. Minerals beneath the ground are controlled by government. That's our law. So government has access to that. So if you see it, government can pay you for your crops and maybe compensation for your land, but you, you can't have the oil. And that is why some people say resource control. Let us control our resources. Okay. So that's to, 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 to bequeath with themselves with those resources instead of our law bequeaths it to the government. So, so we are right to blame the government. And these are responsibilities that have been assigned constitutionally to government. If government is not able to do it, then those in power need to leave. We're 200 million people here. We can find people who can do it. OK. OK. OK, sir, um, I wanted to ask you, you know, um, over time, we have always complained when it comes to the production of crude oil in Nigeria. We're always told, oh, it's the government that has the power to do this, do that, concerning the refineries. And like you rightfully said, private sector, if they come in, they're still going to be licensed by the governors, but by the government, rather. But um, we've been, as a people in Nigeria, we always blame our government every time there's an issue, every now and then anything goes wrong in the country and we blame the government. Shouldn't we look inwards as a people? Isn't it time for us to stop this blaming of the Nigerian blame government game. for yeah. everything that goes wrong with the country? Can't we just for once try to see, look into having um, a more practical solution that will benefit all of us as citizens? If you could please recommend one for us right here on the show, instead of always blaming the government. We've had so many people do this mm -hmm. over the last Well, it, it's years. unfortunate that you, you, you want to take the blame for Lovina. No, no, sir. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you don't want the government that is responsible for the failures, you are the driver of a vehicle. You have an accident. You say they should blame your mother who is sleeping in the, in the house. That's what you're saying. Government takes all the natural resources, sells it, keeps all the funds. You want to blame me for the road that's not paved? No, but we, we've had people actually spoil our roads in the past, actually. It is the responsibility of going to arrest those people. That's why you, they control police. It's not my responsibility to arrest no. the people. No, it's the responsibility of government. But, uh, why, why are you commander-in-chief, uh, commanding army, commanding a DSS, commanding a police, and you will not arrest a criminal? Then you're asking me, without a gun, without training, to go and arrest a criminal? Ha! Okay. Please now, don't, don't, don't cause more confusion. That's why I say we like to argue. This thing is clear. Cameraman has responsibility. Anchor has responsibility. Anchor, uh, cameraman put the camera on the roof. You say blame the anchor. Ha ha! <laughs> hey! Okay. What is all this argument we bring forward? We just don't want to be productive. <laughs> These arguments are part of the problem. Okay. Something is clear as black and white, we will be arguing. Okay, okay, so let's let, let me go. Government just read a budget. Okay, yes. 27 trillion. Mm. Are you asking me to use my 20,000 to, to, to pave road for you? Or, or what, what, what are you people saying? Okay. What is 27 trillion for? Okay. For, 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 for one bear? No, okay, sir. but, but you, you, could, you could actually advise the government. Oh, we have been know, advising government. Forward, you know. we, we have, everybody has been advising government. Don't even go there. Okay. Labor unions have been advising governments. Mm. The academy has been advising government. Analysts have been advising government. The media 
In all this, your editorial, you have been advising government. Does government want any advice? Government has a clear agenda. Or the people in government have a clear fraudulent agenda to, to violate the laws and do all sorts of nonsense, and then we tolerate it. When they are supposed to be our servants. And that's why I say that's our own failure, when we tolerate it. Okay. We just did an election. Somebody announced fraudulent results. We are tolerating it. Oh, let us continue to tolerate it. Oh, okay. So, so, sir, so, sir, you say that. <laughs> let us continue to tolerate it. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, as people, we as a people need to go out there yeah. and definitely start protesting government. No, government no, 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 no. You don't have to go out. Okay. Well, this thing is simple. I mean, there is no one size that fits all. Mm -hmm. The first thing is that you have a voice. If something is wrong, you lend your voice to how to correct it, not how to exacerbate it and complicate it. Mm -hmm. By saying, why, why do we blame government for a refinery that government built with government money, government appoints the management, then a, a man who is a welding a baba in, in, a, in a lucky beach, you blame him for that? It's, what, what are we saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so we have to blame the government because the constitution assigns that responsibility to government. For example, corruption. I can be corrupt. Maybe I'm the most corrupt person in Nigeria. So what? The Constitution says government should prohibit corruption. So it is the responsibility for government to come and stop me from being corrupt. Yes. The responsibility of government is constitutional. It, government must stop me from being corrupt. It's there. Why does government have DSS, police, uh, and all this? It's to do those duties now. Okay. Ha. Okay, How many so people do I have in my employment? Government has all the people in federal civil service to do this work. Is it one man that is doing it? No. no all right. Not. All right. Let, let's 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 come to another um, question. Please, so it's government. <laughs> Don't go and start asking cameraman so, why do so you, you really want thing. to hammer on it? That it's, it's government. You ask. Okay. So and I will be encouraging that in every way we could, let's uh, lend our voice. Let's speak. That some um, policies that government would be making probably should be that that will be favorable to um, the economy as a whole. Well, I'm not saying they've not been doing, um, given policies that are favorable, mm -hmm. but probably the approach, you know, towards... Well, if they've been doing it, why are we where we are? <laughs> well, it, it, it's a gradual thing. It's a gradual it's thing. It's a gradual and thing. And it's been gradual <laughs> since how long? Okay. Um, okay. So that's, why, that's why I said what you tolerate, you have approved. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So if we don't tolerate and we say, no, this is not acceptable, okay. then it can be redressed. Okay. But when we're not saying this is not acceptable, we say maybe they are trying their best. What, what kind of nonsense is that? Were they trying their best in uh, Singapore when they moved from third world to first world? Were they trying their best in Malaysia when they came here and collected uh, uh, palm fruits and today they are the highest export of, of, of palm oil worldwide? So, Were they so, trying their best? So if Nigeria... if Was Nigeria, Awolo was trying his best when he put uh, okay. uh, free education and he grew the manpower here? Okay. Was he trying his best when he built Coco House? Okay. These people that have been trying your best, their best, what have they done? Okay. Borrow money and, and, and fritter it away. Mm. And now you are paying the money. And then you are asking, where is our money? You knew that you were supporting the way they were borrowing the money. 2006, we wrote to senior president. Uh, you are saying, why don't we advise them? We wrote, I have a copy of the letter, to senior president Saraki to stop, no, sorry, not 2006, when was that? 2016. Sorry, 2016. We wrote to Saraki not to allow the government to continue borrowing unpatriotically and recklessly. Saraki stood his ground, refused to allow it. I have what we wrote to him. He refused to allow the borrowing. Immediately frustrated his election. Got the next uh, senior president in place, Ahmed Lawan, and he had, they, they got it approved. And you're saying we should advise government. The government hates our advice. Oh. They don't want to hear. So if you want to waste your energy, go and be advising government. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So um, let me take up um, this question. You know, um, now there was a time that um, China had to close all of um, entrance to their, you know, to the country just to ensure they build the economy, and probably that has led them to where they are today. Seventy percent of our exportations, seventy percent is actually crude. You know, most of all of this is that goes out. Seventy percent is crude. You get what I'm saying now. Is it possible? Can Nigeria have a situation of such as China, where we decide, okay, we are not exporting, 
or probably we are not exporting this major uh, um, element that we have in this country. These are other things we want to do with them. And we want to close the borders. We want to close all the entry and ensure that we build our nation. Is this something that is doable in Nigeria? Well, uh, there's no one size that fits all. And we have done something similar when we banned the importation of rice. But let me tell you what is more fundamental. In this country, we were importing products, subsidized petroleum products. Hmm? Yes. So if you want to advise government and you want to be patriotic like me, you will suffer. <laughs> now, in this country, we are importing refined products. Some corrupt people, we are exporting them. These are imported subsidized products across the border to make huge profits in neighboring countries. A custom officer joined somebody. Intercepted some of the tankers. He got instructions from his boss to let the tankers go. He refused. They put him through disciplinary process. He was someone to Abuja for discipline, for doing the right thing. And you don't want to blame government. Continue. All of us are here. It will fall on our head. All of us are here. That's okay. Okay, so let's, let me, let's find excuses for them. Okay, so let me ask you this. You know. Um, in recent time, it's been talks about NNPC, NNPC, NNPC being transparent or not being transparent, you know, and um, they are allocating their funds through CBN and all of that. In all of this forest, you know, issue, what's the, uh, the, 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 the place of NNPC? Well, um, NNPC used to be, like you said, through crude oil export, the major source of foreign exchange. But listing clearly, these, these concepts are very simple. There's no sophistication. I like to simplify everything so that everybody can flow and understand. I said, you have one cake, you have eaten it, and you're looking for it. Where will you find it? Maybe you do surgery <laughs> and bring it out of your stomach. Now, NMPC was exporting crude oil, and in the past, we were also refining, so we didn't have to import. Yes. So that forex outflow was not there. Okay. Now, the one NMPC gets from uh, importation of uh, crude oil is the inflow you're talking about. Now that NMPC sold our crude in advance, took the money, which is like borrowing, using our crude that has not been produced, sold it in advance to Afroexim, to, 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 to different SPVs. Now you're asking why are they not making money? The money they have consumed before. They are now servicing. I say, I go to a producer of a TV camera. I say, supply me camera. He gives me a proforma invoice. It's five million. I pay him five million. He says, I supply in two weeks. When you supply in two weeks, will I pay him another five million? Then when you supply, then you start asking him, where is the five million that you, why did you supply? You didn't collect money. When he has collected money since. NMPC sold our crude in advance. And the media knew about it. Because it was in your news. They sold to Afroexim. They sold to many SPVs. Consumed the money. What they were saying it was when you should have written an editorial. When you sell everything up front, what are we going to eat tomorrow? <laughs> Then those of us who come to talk about it, we are seen as uh, troublemakers. That's okay. <laughs> they sold your crude in advance. They are now supplying for the ones they have sold <laughs> in advance. So that is the question everybody is asking. Where, where is the dollar? Which dollar? And secondly, how much crude do you have? In the 1.7 million barrels a day you put in your budget, how much is your share? Because you wrote contracts of irresponsibility, dodging all responsibility, assigning all responsibility to the oil companies. So when they produce, they take most of the oil because that's what you wrote in the contract. Because you didn't want to do any work. This idea of something for nothing. We're going to be living prosperously. We're not going to farm. We're not going to make any shoes. We don't need power. Uh, if power is off, we're going to buy a generator. How? 
All right, all right. Thank you, Mr. Martins Onovo. While we try to wrap up, I think we'll just take um, probably two more questions. So, okay. So um, before we go, sir, um, I wanted to ask you the. Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, as you know, they have been the one in charge of uh, our domestic crude supply, crude oil supply. So, sir, would you um, would you suggest that going forward there should be a forensic audit of the NNPC? Yes, it would be a good idea, but I also think it is uh, wishful. You know why? Only a new government can do that, and that government must have legitimacy. Because uh, it is, these things happen from the highest level. It happens from the highest level. So nobody self-implicates uh, or self-indicts. So you don't ask the people who manage the process to audit the process. So the first thing is that you have to have a, a, a new government, mm. and it has to be legitimate. All right, thank you very much. So let me take the last question. You know, so how do we attract um, foreign investment and then diversification of our export? I think we will be wrapping up with this question. Wishful. Mm -hmm. Wishful. Um, I've worked in Europe. I've worked in America. I've worked here. Investors are not uh, charities. So get the, get the difference. A charity is looking for where there's a need. Investor is looking for where there's profit. Do you understand that? Yeah, I get uh -huh. that. Now, which investor do you want to attract? When the previous investors, including the GSK that was here for over 50 years, they are, they are on the run. Hmm. In this country, I, I must be the oldest person in this studio. I was here when Michelin was producing in Nigeria. Hmm. I was here when Dunlop was producing in Nigeria. I was here when Lovina said we were doing 2.3 barrels, 2.3 <laughs> million barrels. I was here. Okay. I was part of that 2.3 million barrels. So we report we sow. If we do the right things, we're going to get the right results. If we do the wrong, okay. You want investors to come here? If he comes and he gets kidnapped, oh no. Oh, you think he doesn't listen to the news? He doesn't know that there is kidnapping going on. All the expert, any expert that is kidnapped here, the whole world hears about it. And then the news is there. Everybody knows what is going on. Who wants to risk his life because he wants to invest? How does he guarantee his profit? And I've told you, investors estimate their profit before they invest. With your policy some assault, every three months you change policy because you are trying to hide the previous corruption that you have done. You go from a swap to direct sale, direct purchase. You go to import export. You, what is wrong with you? So with all of is this, you don't know what you're okay, doing. Okay, okay. So with all of this changing of policies and all, here investor again, cannot plan. So what is the way forward? I want you to suggest a way forward. The way forward is simple now. Okay. The way forward is simple. We have told you first. You have to be productive. Productive. Don't be lazy. Don't be corrupt. What do you want to hear? You want to hear that you do blah blah money will come, dollar will fill everywhere. That's, that's what you want to hear. You want dollar, okay. you want dollar, you produce things, you sell outside. If you sell it in Nigeria, you get naira. Mm. Me, yo, I don't have money to buy Bruno Magli shoe, but I like them. They are made in Italy. If you produce the shoe that is better than Bruno Magli in Nigeria, I prefer to buy that because it's cheaper for me. And it's better. So you have to compete. And you don't compete with mediocrity, with president that does not have wayek. That's not how to compete.